I'm here at Sani. Located in Changsha in the Hunan province, these are the guys that build the machines that pump the concrete, dig the foundations, and lift the steel that has powered the single largest construction boom in the world. Now, to put this in perspective, in just 25 years of doing business, Sani has become the largest construction equipment manufacturer in all of China. They build the tallest skyscrapers, like the Shanghai Tower, setting a new world record for pumping concrete 620 meters high, along with airports, harbors, roads, and rail, with state-of-the-art machines made in China. As we drive here for the next 10 minutes, that guy's going to come out? Yes. Then 10 minutes later, that guy's going to come yeah. out? If it's a busy season, yes. All day, every day? Yes. I can see like maybe 15, 20 people. Yeah. The total here is about uh, 65 people. There are more than 140 robots in this workshop. <laughs> you actually have more robots than humans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so as I look around this factory, this thing didn't even exist in 2011. That's right. Beginning of the 2011, there was a, I think it's a farmer lying over here. <laughs> this massive building boom produced a strong economy. China urbanized in a fraction of the time it took the West. Total transformation within a generation. And because it all happened at once, companies like Sani that were on the ground at the time had the chance to contribute to almost every aspect of China's reinvention. It is incredible to say that you were a part of not just the urbanization of China, but really the transformation. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's, that's an amazing thing. Almost all the uh, construction uh, uh, jobs need our, uh, our machine. One is uh, the buildings, the tallest building in China. And also the infrastructure like the highway, the high-speed railway, and also the huge harbors and the longest bridges like that. China could build up to 50,000 skyscrapers in the next 20 years. And 82 new airports are due to open by the end of 2015, a rate of roughly one each week. But when building bigger than ever before, the tools China needs have to be reimagined. It's a challenge that has sparked both creativity and invention. As China's construction boom continues to increase, they're building not just more projects, but bigger ones. And in order to execute those designs, they literally have to invent new and larger forms of construction equipment. Case in point, what I'm standing on right here is a crane boom that connects to a piece of equipment that can lift, get this, 3,600 tons, one of only two in the entire world. And today, we're going to break this crane down and ship it out to take part in its very first maiden project. Consisting of over 150 individual parts, it's one of the largest of its kind. This assembly requires not just a dedicated team, but heavy reinforcements. The pins are being attached. Once we're locked and loaded, the crane operator will give it the go, and what I'm standing on right now will get lifted up and taken off the crane. So we have the pins both disengaged. We have tension in the wire, and I think right now you're going to see this whole massive piece begin to slide out. Oh, here she comes. It's about to come loose. And look at that. Drive the crane? You're gonna let me drive the crane. You hear this? So for the next lift, that piece you just saw, I am gonna operate the crane and get that mega piece off to the side. I don't know how to drive a crane. All right, all right. Love. Oh, okay. How are you? I'm Danny. Hi. How are you? Could you show me what all the controls do? All right. Okay, we're driving, we're moving. And now, I'm gonna lower the jib. All right, bringing it down. Here we go. And now, this piece is sitting on the ground. These machines are the tools that built modern China. They are just as advanced and powerful as you might imagine. And they're also surprisingly graceful. It's one thing to make a tremendous amount of high-tech construction equipment. But even with an amazing machine like this and a pair of novice hands, it's just a big pile of metal. So today, I'm going to meet some of the finest operators in the entire company. And they are going to show me what they can do. Gentlemen, how are you? Hey, nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Uh -huh. Tiago, what's yeah. your name? 
Robot. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Hi. Dawn. So we got Robot, Tiago, and Dawn. We have three of the finest operators in the whole company who are holding three very bizarre tools with them. Robot, you have a bottle of beer with you. Tiago, you have an egg. And lastly, Dawn, you're carrying parchment and a calligraphy pen. And really good crane operators tend to talk about the bucket or the jib as an extension of their arm. But this is really going to put that to the test when he's literally going to try and write not just cursive, but beautiful calligraphic kanji letters. Take it away, my friend. <laughs> Look at that. He's dabbing the edge of the pen to get any residual ink off it. You gotta check out his focus. I mean, look at this guy's face. He's like totally locked in, super calm. Keeping in mind, these are the devices that are typically used to move dirt and boulders and rocks. And now he's managing a calligraphy pen. That was amazing. That was really incredible. Quality changes the world, huh? In kanji with an excavator. Robot, the floor is yours, buddy. And that just happened. <laughs> Bring it home. Five for five. Does he have it? Oh, he has it, ladies and gentlemen. That's a robot with an excavator. Weird, but amazing. This is like some elaborate mating ritual. Why well, do you have it? The big finale. We've moved spoons, we've opened beer bottles, we've made calligraphy. I mean, when you think about what these guys build, construction equipment, heavy steel machines to lift things and dig things and create things, what you don't think about is this, the kind of intense, eloquent, articulated precision that we got to see here today. And I can tell you, I've been to a lot of construction sites. I've never seen anything like that before. These are some of the biggest toys in the world, designed specifically for China's needs. And once they go on site, the company keeps a close watch. And right now, they're monitoring SANI equipment in different cities all over China? It's just incredible to think that right now, as I look at this map, and I look at all of China, there's, you know, 200,000 pieces of equipment. And you're monitoring all of them. So it might look like I just joined the Chinese military, but actually, I'm at Sani Engineering Construction College. This is college. This is a university. China's national push to urbanize created a demand for skilled construction workers far beyond supply. So industry leaders founded a university to train the workforce China needed. These young men are acquiring the physical and mental skills they'll need to build the cities of tomorrow. Okay, who's number one? I want to see who's the best. Is it you? Who? You? Are you the best? What's your name? My name is Frank. Frank? Come over here. Bring it up, Frank. Round of applause for Frank. Round of applause for Frank. Come here. Come here. Frank. Yeah. You claim to be the best excavator operator in the whole class. Maybe I am best. Maybe he's the best. Or maybe he's not. We're going to yeah. find out in a one-on-one, -on -one, head to head no-holds-barred challenge, sudden death, no overtime. Let's do this. Thank you. Come on. All right.
Okay. You... I'm taking you down, Frank. I'm taking you down. I... You're going to win? Yes. Let's find out. <laughs> so we got two minutes on the clock. Hey, Frank, Frank, look over there. Your mom... <laughs> Frank, your mom's coming. Ready? Go. I'm coming at you, Frank. Go big or go home, buddy. So what's the score? No. So in terms of the amount of dirt that each of us hauled, I hauled a whopping 2,000 kilograms. Round of applause for me. Frank, 9,300 kilograms. The winner! Champion! When students graduate from this university, they'll join a construction workforce of about 37 million people ready to operate, repair, and even build the construction equipment that is transforming the country tunnel to tower. The transition from rural landscape to industrial hub happens surprisingly fast. After 2008, from 2009 to 2011 was the best uh, time you know, in Sunny history. Which is wild because if you imagine 2009, it was probably the worst economic year for almost any company, for almost every country. Yeah. And yet 2009 was Sunny's best year yeah. because China was literally building cities at a rate that yeah. no one has ever built before. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's back up. In 2008, the global recession hit. Many countries tried to stimulate their stalled economies with tax cuts and spending. But none of them did what China did. They committed a $586 billion fiscal stimulus package with massive spending on construction, the most ever in Chinese history. We're talking about 40,000 kilometers of railways, 6 million affordable apartments, nearly 100 new airports, and tens of thousands of kilometers of highway a high-stakes investment that paid off for the country as well as for the construction industry. The way in which things have changed in China and grown so quickly mm. seems to be something that could have only happened in China. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? So we uh, work very, very hard. We started from a very poor, um, from the agriculture and society. Yeah. So for us, so we need to learn everything and also the Chinese people has very strong wish to improve their uh, uh, living condition. Yeah. You know, when I was a child, it's very difficult to feed ourselves. You know? so, really? So, yeah, really, really. But now we are, I'm one of the, uh, the executives in, in, in one of the biggest companies. So it's a big, big change, very big change. So it's building people you know, working so hard and learn so hard. I think it's a, it's a, so we can make something happen.